As the offseason rolls on, the commanders continue their search to find their next offensive coordinator. We take a look at who they've interviewed so far and what that could mean for the offense on the field. Plus, our special teamers put on a show this season, and that earned a few members a trip to this year's Pro Bowl games. We go inside the film room to highlight the play from Jeremy Reeves and Tress Way this season. And this past year was one of growth for the young players on our roster. We are joined by Pro Football Focus Analyst Brad Spielberger to highlight some of the players who shine brightest this year. And welcome on into Command Center, Julie Donaldson, Logan Paulson, and Sam Tanamas. And we start this show off with some good news as head coach Ron Rivera has been announced as a finalist for the 12th Annual Salute to Service Award, uh, honoring his commitment to supporting the military. Hayden Hurst and George Kittle are the other finalists, Logan. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. Anytime this organization and Ron specifically can support our military service members, I think that's always fantastic. And Ron, obviously, his background with the military makes perfect sense that he's a big supporter of that. Group. Yeah, that's the, that's the first thing that came to mind, mm -hmm. just knowing his background and just knowing that that's something that he's probably going to preach to his guys, mm -hmm. that we have to pay homage to those men. So um, I'm glad he's honored in that way. He's always quick to uh, talk about how he grew up with his father being in the military for 32 <coughs> years serving and how important that is and what lessons he learned from that as well that he still passes on to the team today and he uses in the way that he had coaches. So uh, the winners will be announced at the NFL Honors on February 9th. Well, Washington has begun the process for finding their next offensive coordinator. So far, the team has officially interviewed five candidates for the vacant role. Pat Shermer, he's been a head coach with both the Browns and the Giants, most recently served as the Broncos OC from 2020 to 21. Internal candidate Ken Zampezi, Washington's quarterback coach since 2020, as well as a few interviews with position coaches from around the league. Falcons QB coach Charles London, Dolphins running back coach Eric Studsville, and Rams assistant head coach tight ends Thomas Brown. Now, if you include looking for those that are looking for head coaching roles, Washington is one of 12 teams in search of an offensive coordinator, which makes it uh, Santana a bit difficult trying to go out there and say, hey, well, this is the job. This is the person that we want. There's a lot of competition, a lot of competition. And then one of the things that stand out to me is just what are you really looking for? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm big on. Uh, I'm not caught up in the whole thing about the names of who the guys available. I'm looking for systems. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for what system fits the guys that we have. And I've been a part of teams where we had certain, you know, caliber of guys and we had bogus systems. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I see those guys, man, there's a couple of guys that stands out. One, Studsville mm -hmm. and Brown. Just the system they, th those guys yeah. both coached in recently, you know what and I'm saying? And Logan, if you do look at the names, is there anything that you can pull from it for what they might be looking at from this position? Yeah, I mean, I think they're looking kind of, it's interesting because they're looking at guys who have a lot of experience and guys that are really relatively new. And I think when you look at Shermer, he's a guy with a ton of experience that Ron knows relatively well, runs a system similar to what Scott ran last year, which would seem like a natural transition for a guy like Sam Howell. Then you get a guy guy like uh, Stud Studesville, who again is more West Coast, more Kyle Shanahan-ish in his approach, which would be a pretty drastic departure. So obviously they kind of have a little bit of both philosophies, but definitely that run first is a priority for them. It, that's it, really what Coach was saying this offseason, is they wanted to be a run first team, but you can't ignore the fact that you do have three dynamic receivers <laughs> in Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, Curtis, Sam, you have to marry the two together. Yeah. Santana, if you look at the talent that this team does have, what do you think would be one of the best kind of like that they need to look for to help this offense kind of get over that, you know, the challenges they faced last year of not being able just to put up enough points? Well, you know, some of the things that stands out when you have that kind of a, a talent on your team, you want a coach that can kind of go on, you know, think on the run. I mean, like be creative, you know, as as things unfolded. You know what I mean? You want to be able to say, okay, I'm not so I'm not so stern into what I have that's is my system, but if we can do something that I saw before somewhere else, let me let me let me bring this and and you know implement that into what I have going on. So I want to see a coach that can be creative on the spot. That say, hey, you know what? I have these guys, let me do this because they're just that dynamic and we can use it. Uh, yeah, I think that, that flexibility and speaking to your player's skill set is something that you want to see. That was something that was a criticism of Scott. He never really changed his offensive philosophy to fit the skill position players. I think you want the new guy to kind of embrace that, hold that, and find ways to 
be this run first team because you know San Francisco is a run first team but also get the playmakers involved mm -hmm. which a team like San Francisco does very very well you know we don't know exactly when they're going to make announcement um, on whomever they do decide to select but we know it's probably coming up relatively quickly the next mm -hmm. few weeks or so because you have draft and free agency mm -hmm. coming yeah. up and Logan the importance of putting that person in place before you get to those parts of the offseason I mean I think it's critical because especially if you're going to involve like a you know outside zone coach or an outside zone philosophy you're the type of offensive lineman for example is going to be very different yeah you're not going to look at the kid from Ohio State who's six eight you know 370 pounds that doesn't fit that philosophy yeah. but I think like those types of decisions need to be hammered in uh, now yeah that's all goes back to what I was talking about you need to get that guy now because you want to know in this little short period of time where we're going to be looking at draft picks we're going to be looking at free agents you know guys out there in free agency you want to make sure you're bringing the right guy in that's going to fit the coach that we bring in the style of play that he's going to implement or expect these guys to go out there and play. A lot of offseason priorities, getting the right offensive coordinator for this team would be number one for head coach Ron Rivera and the front office. Now, if we talk about other areas of the team where they excelled this past season, well, that would be special teams. Uh, it was led by a pair of Pro Bowlers, Tress Way and Jeremy Reeves. Tress earned a second trip to the Pro Bowl while Jeremy had a year to remember, becoming just the second Washington player in the last 26 seasons to be named an AP First Team All-Pro. Logan and Fred Smith now, here standing by to highlight their special team's play. It is time to go inside the film room presented by Amino. It pays to be healthy. Fred, we get to do something today that we don't get to do very often, yep. and that's talk about special teams. All Specifically right. these two boys, Reeves and Tressway, because they're doing what, Fred? They're going to the dang they Pro go, Bowl. They're, they're going to Pro Bowl. They're going to Vegas. That's and they're right. going for free. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. That's, that makes it all the better, right? So let's take a look at this first play. Yeah. They, Punt team is a complicated thing, Fred. It's it the first defensive play, right? Mm -hmm. So check this out. we got guys touching their helmets. They're saying, we're switching the direction of the punt. So Tress initially wants to go this way. Yep. They tap their helmets, and they're going to go this way. Fred, why are they switching the direction of the punt, you think? I, I, it's because of where are they blitzing from and where are the two gunners? Yeah, where like, are the two gunners? If the two gunners dictates, now you got one up here, he's the guy likely to get free. They like to get free. And so mm -hmm. what you're doing is you're putting your, your cover team in a good position to be successful. Mm -hmm. And Tresh can do this. He can yeah. punt. This is what makes him special. He can punt this way yep. and punt this way and make them both look the same. Make Without it really, changing his stance. Make it really hard on the returner. So mm -hmm. take a look. Change mm -hmm. the direction of the punt. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go. Now it's time to go hunt. That's, yeah. that's all there is to it. And let's just take a look at Jeremy Reeves. So when you have a PP, He's your third gunner, right? Yep, yep. He's your third gunner. He's getting down here to cover. Look at all this space, Fred. This gives me this gives me anxiety. Man. I know it does. Yeah, look at that. Like, how, like how hard is it to make a play in this kind of space? Uh, it's very hard to make a uh, make a play in this space, especially when you got speed at the yeah, returner right, right here. But guess what these guys do? They playing off each other. He's behind. Cam Sims is behind. But you got your attack up here. This yeah. is why we switched it. Yep. And now. He, he, he cleans everything up, and that's his job. He cleans everything up, so he yeah. defeats this block. And, Fred, there were so many tackles he had this year, yeah. I couldn't even put them all in this cut. I just yeah. had to pick the best ones. So he was so, so productive yeah. this year, making plays and getting after it. So, Fred, yeah. uh, you know what's coming. Yeah. Look, at this is him right here. He's here with Armani Rogers. You yeah. see the returner muff the punt, balls on the ground, and guys get hungry. And people see this result, they say, yeah. Man, I don't want to be this returner. Oh, that's what I'm talking yeah, about. Give him some confetti. Please, please give yeah. me some confetti yeah. right there. Yeah. All, all over right. the place. No one wants to be that guy, right? Nobody wants to be but that guy. But that's set up because Tress has some voodoo on the football, yeah. Fred. Yep. He yep. does something really special. Now, we're going to talk about it real quick. So, right. Tress, you see his shoulders, Fred? Yep. They're pointing this way, right? Yep, they so, are. So, the returner thinks the ball's going that way. He's going to open up that way. He's going to open up that way. Mm -hmm. But watch how... Tress does this. He swings across his body with his leg. His leg goes across nope. his body, yep. and he's left-footed. Yep. So that ball comes up, and it tails really hardcore. And like B. Mitch told me, yeah. I, they're used to ca catching balls counterclockwise off a right foot kicker. Yeah. Off a left foot kicker is clockwise. Yeah. And so now the ball will change yeah. directions on the return. That's why you see three, four, five drops a year yeah. when it comes to Tress Way. It's a different velocity on the ball and a different end point. Yeah, look at this guy running to the football. He thinks he's in good position here. But see how he has to accelerate to get under this? Yeah. That ball is accelerating away from him because yeah. that spin you're talking about, and it's tough because that bangs right off his hands. And you know what happens? You get punished for dropping the football, man. Get there with nasty intentions and that'll get you to the Pro Bowl. Yeah, now let's look at this. Now he's facing this way. Same yep. body position, right? Yep. But watch how he kind of leads the ball this way, right? He leads out in front of it, kicking out. And the ball goes that way. And then watch this returner, Fred. 
He comes out here, and you see how he kind of stutters his feet the yeah, last minute? It, it, and the ball crosses his face right. at the last minute, and that's what I was talking about with that funky kind of uh, clockwise spin. And so he gives you that. Mm -hmm. Tress gives you that ability to kind of change a game. It's not luck. It's no. his skill and he's, how he hits the football. He's a lethal weapon. And when you combine these two guys, yes. uh, you got the guy that's going to put the ball where it needs to be, and you got your initial tackle. Yeah. If you have that on special teams, your special team has a chance to be special. Yeah, and again, great scheme here by Katzer saying we're going to block these guys up front with our poorer coverage players. Mm -hmm. That's what they're in there to yeah. block. Yeah. Let, let Reeves cover and watch him tear down this field and watch the play he makes on this ball to keep it out of the end zone. He is running. He has to negotiate the returner. That ball looks like it's going in the end zone and he just touches it enough to get it back and we have to talk about these two, two, two young guys, Fred. Yeah. Yeah. Holmes and Percy, Percy have been absolutely phenomenal this year so it's really those three guys that make this go yeah but man Reeves is the guy that is kind of the helm of the ship the face of it he makes a ton of plays gets the protections called here we go say, he's your PP he's the guy that gonna make sure first the ball is kick and after that I gotta go get the ball and we talked about how good Tress is right we talked about how awesome he is but yeah when sometimes he makes mistakes he's trying to put this ball over here in the corner right yep trying to put the ball over here in the corner he miss hits this the ball kind of sails you what's the worst thing gonna happen on punt friend right. First of all, you do not want to get past that kicker. Yeah, you, and, I mean, that return. And you also you don't want the ball well, in the middle of the field. field. Yeah. You got to cover all this grass, right? Yep, yep. But when you have dogs yeah. hunting on punt return, right? Hunt. All these guys hunting right here. Yep, yep. Getting after the football, it doesn't matter. Because look at them. They force the ball back. Reeves is there to clean this up. And that's why you're going to the Pro Bowl, man. Because you are getting in on tackles. You're making plays. You've got a guy who can put the ball where it needs to go. Yep. It's exciting stuff, right? And you got a group that'll back him up. I don't know if you ever drop bread on the ground, but ants attack it very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and this how it looks when Ant attack bread. Yeah, so super excited for these boys, man. They're going to Vegas for free, like hey, Fred said. Congratulations. And, man, they're only going to get better. So that good stuff is always there. And speaking of the Pro Bowl games, we're taking our show on the road next week. We'll bring you updates from Las Vegas as the guys prepare for this year's new Pro Bowl games. Highlights, reaction, interviews you will not want to miss starting Thursday, February 2nd on our Commander's YouTube channel. Now coming up next, John Dotson was able to make an instant impact during his rookie season. Brad Spielberger of Pro Football Focus joins us to help break down the year that was. And with four teams remaining, who will be punching their ticket to Super Bowl 57? We break down the championship round matchups later in the show. Now become a 2023 Commander Season Ticket member today. Claim your place at FedEx Field for 2023 starting at just $50. Commander Season Tickets include more benefits than ever before. New year round events tailored to you. 50% off game day concessions and more. Learn more and place your season ticket deposit today at commanders.com backslash season tickets. Welcome back to Command Center. The margin for error is slim in the NFL. This past season, Washington went 5-3-1 and one in games decided by just one score. Since Ron Rivera took over as head coach in D.C., more than half the games have been decided by one score, going 13-12-1 in those games. Now, as Coach Rivera and company head into the offseason, they will be looking for ways to help improve every day. This is our Field Pass presented by FedEx, where now meets next. Joining us now is PFF NFL analyst and co-host of the PFF Forecast and PFF Wire podcast, Brad Spielberger. Brad, thanks for joining us. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. You know, obviously the Commanders didn't have a great season this year. They didn't make the playoffs 8-8. Eight and eight. What are some positive things you can take away, you know, from your perspective for this team? Yeah, you know, I think the defense got off to a slow start, but then played very, very well down the stretch. Not even the stretch, the last, you know, 12, 14 games of the season. So you continue to build there. You obviously have some decisions to make on Deron Payne and Montez Sweat. Uh, you get Chase Young back in the fold there, but you know, they grew. And then I also think, look, on offense, you know, you see the teams in the playoffs right now having a trio of Terry McLaurin with Jahan Dotson now in the fold and Curtis Samuel. That's what these playoff teams are doing is adding weapons around a young quarterback. So, you know, maybe you aren't that many pieces away to, to getting back in the playoffs. Yeah, lots of things to unpack there. Let's start with Deron Payne and Montez Sweat. Obviously, those are some big things that need to be decided this offseason. Deron Payne played his face off, was an absolute monster. What would you do if you're the commanders? 
So I, I think a franchise tag makes sense there. Place a franchise tag around $19 million, and then you try to work out a long-term deal. Um, it, it is tough timing where I think we're going to see a market explosion um, for the interior defender group with Jeffrey Simmons and Dexter Lawrence and Quinn and Williams and all these young players. Um, but that also just shows the value of that spot. So start with a tag, try to work out a long-term deal. And maybe if you don't, you, ju you just go year to year like they're clearly comfortable doing you know, in years past. Yeah, and is there any merit to tag and trade? I know there's, he's going to have, he's never, his value will never be higher than it is right now. Is there a way that gets done? I think there is. I think it should be something you explore. You, know, you probably could get a first round pick in a trade, even though this team has to, you know, the new team would have to bring him in and immediately sign him to a, you know, a major multi-year contract, or at least, you know, go on the franchise tag and then see how things play out, I guess, like in Orlando Brown and Kansas City. But yes, it is such a tough position to, to land in free agency that I think there would be teams lining up to trade for Deron Payne. And yeah, you, you get a couple extra picks. Maybe it enables you to trade up for a quarterback or get ready for the future. Um, if you get some you know, future draft capital, uh, it's definitely something worth exploring. Yeah, and uh, the other thing you talked about with the offense is the dynamic kind of stable of playmakers and how important is, that is. One of the things that the, this team struggled with this year was the offensive line and their kind of inconsistent production. If you're the commanders, what are some moves you're making this offseason to kind of remedy that? Yeah, I think the draft makes the most sense there. I think they're in a great spot for some of those top end tackles in the draft this year. Look, Charles Leno's a good player, but obviously not a you know super long term solution. Sam Cosby might get kicked inside the guard eventually, or you know he's more of a fluid player right now and not a you know a bona fide guaranteed tackle starter. So I would start there, um, you know, because in free agency it's it's not easy to find high end offensive linemen. But I think there you shift to interior offensive linemen. I think mm. Ben Powers. In Baltimore, could be a great guard to bring in for them. Maybe if you move on from Chase Roulier with the injury situation, a guy like Ethan Pochich who played for the Cleveland Browns this year. Um, they, they have options on the interior and free agency, but I would go tackle in the draft. Still to come this Saturday, we are airing a Commander's season recap special featuring my radio broadcast crew, Linda Fletcher and Bram Weinstein. They join me for a quick preview next. And get ahead of the game and secure your luxury suite for the 2023 season. Experience the excitement of a commander's game with the climate-controlled comfort and privacy of a luxury suite. Enjoy gourmet catering options, VIP parking, and more for you and your guests. Learn more and place your suite deposit for the 2023 season at commanders.com slash suites. We're out here at FedEx Field getting ready to tape our NBC special recapping the season. Of course, London Fletcher, Bram Weinstein here with me. Okay, London, you look back on the year that was. What's your biggest takeaway? Man, just so many missed opportunities. When you look at this team and the way they got things going and for it to end the way it ended, just missed opportunities. It was so close, really. I mean, the margin for error for them throughout the year, even in the good times when they were winning in the middle of the season and then the bad times at the end of the season, it was all on the razor's edge. And so I think what really stands out to me is this is an extremely talented team. And as if you've watched how the playoffs have played out, who doesn't think they couldn't have gone on a run if things fell right for them and they had gotten in? Yeah, unfortunately, it did not. And look, they controlled their own destiny at one point. They had the opportunities to extend the season numerous times, and unfortunately, they did not. I mean, that is one of the biggest things coming into the years. We wanted to talk about the potential the team had. Head coach Ron Rivera says that's a very dangerous word, London. It, it, it is um, because, you know, it can go either you achieve that, you reach that potential, or you didn't achieve that level of potential. And when you look at this football team going 8 8 and 1, in my opinion, I don't think they lived up to the potential of this football team. I felt like it should have been an 11 or 12 win football team. I mean, when you walk out of a season with the third ranked defense in the league, you think that that's a playoff season, especially with the players that they have circulating on offense. Uh, the offense just unfortunately did not put up enough points to change the outcome from this. So the team did make changes. And of course, the offseason, uh, many more to come. But you can catch our NBC special on NBC at 7 p.m. on Saturday. Game day details are delivered by Paisano's where you get buy one, get one large pizzas on Commander's Game Day and free toppings for extra points on Monday. Order online at PaisanosPizza.com. Well, here's a look at the championship weekend schedule. The 49ers are playing their third conference championship game in the last four seasons. They will visit the top seeded Eagles at 3 p.m. on Sunday on Fox. Then 6.30 on CBS, it's a rematch of the last season's AFC title match with the Bengals visiting the Chiefs. So it is time now for our keys to winning presented by the Maryland Lottery. Play fast, win fast with fast play games from 
the Maryland Lottery. Okay, a chance for Super Bowl 57 is this weekend. We now know the final four teams that are going to be playing. Uh, real quickly, the the key to winning. Like, what's it going to take for the person to be standing last? To be standing last? What do you think, Tanner? Offense, think, defense? You know, one of the things that's always been something that I love is what? It's, I don't know. Tell me. Take away! No, turnovers! Oh, my gosh, Take Tanner. Away. Gosh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think Jeez. Purdy has been one of those guys. He's almost been, like, you know, uh, I mean, yeah. over. Like, yeah. he hasn't had any takeaways. No turnovers. If Philly can do that, I think Hurst is the, you know, deciding factor when it comes to those two yeah. teams. But um, the takeaway is going to be big. Yeah, I think that's okay, well, if we do talk about San Fran and Philadelphia, what would you say is going to be the – who's going to advance and, and why? Gosh, styles make fights, man. I'm so excited for this game because you get this really dynamic offense that can win in multiple different ways. They have excellent receivers. They've got a dominant running game, one of the best offensive lines in football versus one of the best defenses in football that's mm -hmm. fast and physical, that schemes up, finds advantages. So really looking forward to that. And then Philadelphia's defense has two of the best corners in the NFL, yeah. an outstanding front. And can they make Brock Purdy look like a rookie, yeah. Mr. Irrelevant? So I am super excited. I have to give a slight edge to San Francisco because of the coaching and what Kyle's done there. But gosh, that is going to be a heck of a football game. Yeah, and that's how I was leaning. I was leaning more so saying that regardless of what we want to talk Talk about when it comes to San Fran and Purdy. Yeah. The defense has been playing so well so to good. where you just kind of say to yourself that in order for Eagles, the Eagles to go out there and get this game done, it has to be Hurts. Hurts yeah. has to play one of those games, a perfect game. Yeah. He has to make sure that he's solid when it comes to those run looks and he's even more solid when it comes to sure. hitting the right guy that's open down the field. So if Hurts does his job, I'm going with the Eagles. Mm. I think yep. the Eagles I agree. Well. Keeping it in the NFC East. Uh, let's go over to the AFC, though. Real quickly here, you got Cincinnati and Kansas City. I mean, this is the future of the NFL. Burrow, Mahomes. I mean, this is the game that you're looking for. I'm a little disappointed Mahomes is hurt. Yeah. But golly, Burrow's looking so sharp. And then Kansas City each week seems to have just a fantastic game plan. Really looking forward to that game. You know, one of the things that stood out to me is just seeing what the Bengals was able to do this year oh against gosh, those yeah. guys. I mean, Kansas City has been, to me, the team that everyone's looking forward to say, can, can we get like these guys? Yeah. And the Bengals say, no, we are we are better. We are so, our own person. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? So, so to see those guys handle them, manhandle them mm -hmm. throughout the season, it's a, it's a layup for them, yeah. I think. I mean, especially with especially with Holmes, you know, Mahomes being being injured, being nicked up. So um, that is absolutely huge. We saw he has the heart, but can he do it this weekend? The games will be fun to watch, and we hope you enjoyed watching this show. Thanks for joining us on Command Center.